First at four, we're learning about another possible plea deal in the alleged kidnapping plot surrounding Governor Gretchen Whitmer. We'll tell you where things stand this afternoon. The newest COVID-19 numbers show the state of Michigan is trending in the right direction as cases drop again. Plus, here's Andrew. And Karen, we're looking at a few snowflakes here on Storm Tracker 4. How much more snow will fall later on this afternoon as we go into this evening? We'll talk more about that. Tonight's forecast and the week ahead, first at 4. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, it looks like a local man charged in an alleged plot to kidnap Michigan's governor has agreed to plead guilty. Local 4 Sean Light takes a closer look at what we know about the defendant and what this means for the pending cases against other suspects. Well, good afternoon. The first thing we want to do is explain who Caleb Franks is and also explain why this is a massive development in the case to kidnap Governor Whitmer. Now, when this case broke, the very first door we knocked on was Caleb Franks's door because he lives in Waterford and we were trying to find out more information. We learned he's only 26 and then he was one of the men charged by federal prosecutors in the Whitmer plot case. Court documents we obtained today read that Franks is now pleading guilty to these charges, that it's a plea bargain agreement and Franks says he's guilty of conspiracy to kidnap Governor Whitmer. During the early days of COVID, you'll remember multiple men around the state and around the country met online and met at protests and said they were outraged by Michigan State COVID lockdowns. Franks now says they did indeed train and the plot was very real. The federal charge carries life in prison, but here's the key. Franks is agreeing to now cooperate in the Fed's case against the other men. They include that he must testify against the men that Franks says he actually trained with. That's big because those men go on a federal trial in just a couple of weeks in Grand Rapids. In return, they won't bring additional charges to ask the judge for a lighter sentence in this case. Much more as we're learning about this big guilty plea in the Whitmer plot at 5 o'clock. Back to you. All right, and Franks will become the second person to admit guilt in that alleged plot. That decision leaves four other men to stand trial. We are learning more today about the past of State Representative Joel Jones. The Detroit Democrat was in a Livingston County courtroom this morning for a hearing on the charges of resisting arrest and drunk driving. And during that hearing, we learned police found Jones asleep behind the wheel of a running vehicle back in 2019. Now he passed a field sobriety test and was not charged. Prosecutors say he resisted police in that case also but the judge ruled his past conduct cannot be brought up at trial. Jones has one more settlement conference next week before heading to trial. Now let's take a look at today's COVID-19 numbers. Just in from the state of Michigan, the numbers seem to be trending in the right direction with just under 9,900 new cases in the past three days. Breaks down to a daily average of just under 3,300. Another drop from the numbers we saw Friday. Plus the seven-day positivity rate dropped another percentage point down to 21%. Sadly, COVID still continues to take more victims with 38 additional virus related deaths over the weekend. Mayor Duggan and the Detroit Water and Sewage Department announced a program to help reduce basement backups in 11 flood prone neighborhoods. The $2.4 million pilot program is expected to begin this spring in Aviation Sub and Victoria Park and will then expand to nine more neighborhoods with a history of basement backups. Here's what you will be offered from the city. It's being funded from uh, the American Rescue Plan. Again, we have to thank the president and our supporters in Congress, but it'll be up to $6,000 in support for your basement, depending on your need to protect you. The city will install backwater valves and sump pumps to protect the eligible basements from flooding. They plan to use mostly Detroit contractors to perform the work. Eligible homeowners can apply online and we posted a link for you on clickondetroit.com. All right, we are starting to get some idea of what Governor Whitmer will be pushing for in her next budget. Looks like education is in for a big boost. The Associated Press says Whitmer will propose spending $2.3 billion over four years to recruit and retain teachers and other school staff members. That money could help pay for annual $2,000 bonuses that would grow to $4,000 by the year 2025. Tonight, 5 and 6, we'll be diving into those numbers and some of the other budget news. The governor will unveil her entire proposal on Wednesday. In an effort to bridge the digital divide in Detroit, AT&T has opened a connected learning center to provide free access to technology 
and the internet. The center is located at the Connected Learning Center in the city's Jefferson Chalmers neighborhood. Visitors will have access to computers and high-speed Wi-Fi, as well as education and tutoring resources. AT&T says it will contribute $50,000 to support programming for Jefferson East, Inc. We will have community hours with accessibility to the computer units for employment job searches, for creating resumes for those job searches, for homework assistant needing computer access. A lot of people don't get an experience like this. And I feel like the, the, what they bring into the community is actually really good. And it'll help a lot of students as well with a lot of uh, classes that they have. AT&T says Detroit is one of five cities to open a connected learning center. Right now, the company has plans to open another 20 across the country. Two low fare airlines are ready to team up to become one company flying a bit higher on the list of America's biggest airlines. Frontier is offering to buy Spirit Airlines in a nearly $3 billion cash and stock deal. Overall, the merger would be worth $6.6 billion. Now, if it goes through, the new airline would be the nation's fifth largest carrier. Spirit's CEO says the merger will create an aggressive, ultra low fare competitor to serve consumers. But they could face some close scrutiny from federal regulators as the Biden administration has signaled a tougher line against big corporate mergers. Jury selection is underway in the federal hate crimes trial of three men already convicted of murdering Ahmed Arbery. Father and son, Greg and Travis McMichael, turned down plea deals last week. They're on trial now, along with their neighbor, William Rody Bryan. Now, this is video from previous court hearings. Cameras aren't allowed in federal court because of pretrial publicity. About 1,000 jury notices were mailed to residents across 30 counties in Georgia. So some may actually face a nearly four-hour drive to the courthouse. The three white men have already been sentenced to life in prison for chasing down and shooting Arbery back in 2020. The McMichaels and Brian have all filed motions seeking a new state trial, but that process could take months. We're also keeping our eye on some of the big stories making news around the world on your Monday. NATO countries are pushing for a diplomatic solution to the tensions with Russia, even as U.S. troops have arrived in Poland near the border of Ukraine. Their arrival followed President Biden's decision to deploy 1,700 soldiers there. The White House says a Russian invasion of Ukraine could come any day. Meantime, French President Emmanuel Macron held talks with Russia's Vladimir Putin in Moscow. No breakthroughs were announced. Putin wants to make sure Ukraine doesn't join NATO and has amassed 130,000 Russian troops on the Ukrainian border. Putin denies plans to invade. We also have this from London. Those royal guns salute the 70th anniversary of Queen Elizabeth II taking the throne. She is the first British monarch to reach a platinum jubilee. The actual anniversary was yesterday, but tradition dictates royal salutes happened the next day. Those royal guns blasted their tribute near Buckingham Palace. The queen is now 95 years old and has renewed her pledge to serve her country as long as she lives. A bigger celebration is planned for June when the weather improves. Weather's improved a bit for us compared to last week. Uh, let's send it over to Andrew <laughs> to see what we can expect for the rest of the day. Karen, as you mentioned, welcome to the improvement. We do have some snow out there. It's remaining generally light, nothing like the heavy, persistent snow like we saw last week on Groundhog Day itself, especially. But still, here on Storm Tracker 4, we're watching a few flakes fly here north of the city, closer to I 69 for our neighbors over in Flint. Also around Lapeer, other parts of the, of the thumb, including Burnside, and into Sanilac County at this hour. Now, as we go over the next few hours, these showers will slowly drift off to the east. Minor accumulations, maybe a trace to a tenth of an inch to a half inch as it moves into Lake Huron eventually. We're even seeing a few flakes flying here in the city of Detroit, right here downtown, over in Windsor, and over on the east side of the city as well. So watch out for a few slick spots here and there. Maybe some of the exit ramps and entry ramps off of uh, I-94 also along Mack Avenue, even Jefferson Avenue might have a few slick spots as well, but nothing impossible to get around. Now, weather-wise for tonight, it gets colder and the winds still remain pretty strong, so wind chills by morning will easily be in the single digits. 
between 4 and 8 degrees is what it will feel like right here in the, in the Motor City and in the Metro Zone. In your 4 zone weather, some uh, wind chills getting closer to zero south of I-94, especially in Lenawee County by tomorrow morning. West of 275, wind chills between 3 and 8 degrees. Wind chills also in the single digits at the bus stop for your Tuesday morning as well in our north zone. But it will be drier. The snow that we're seeing now, it's out of here by midnight and certainly by tomorrow morning. In fact, we'll see some sunshine for tomorrow. Now, currently, it's 30 degrees. Feels pretty good, at least by February standards right here in the Motor City. Our average high this time of year is 33. We'll be slightly below average for tomorrow. But as you can see, for much of this week, Arctic air not affecting us. In fact, we'll see temperatures above average on Wednesday and on Friday, especially with highs that may be in the middle, even upper 30s. But there's a chance of a few snowflakes again. I'll show that to you in your seven day forecast in a second. First, it's 31 over in Romeo, same thing in Emmett, 31 degrees for our friends over in uh, Howell and also around Brighton, while it's 30 degrees at Metro Airport and over in Monroe. Bit of a wider view shows winds are a factor in your neighborhood too. Wind speeds are anywhere from 6 to 12 miles per hour, so it's making it feel like it's closer to the low 20s or even teens as you step out for the rest of the afternoon or this evening. So that's what we need to dress for. So a few snowflakes hang around as we go through the next couple of hours. Many of them dissipate or move on to the east as we get closer to midnight and shortly afterward. You see a little break in the clouds here during the day tomorrow, so I think we'll see some sunshine on Tuesday, although it will be a little bit colder. And right behind that sunshine, another frontal system. So clouds are coming back for the middle of the week with another chance of on and off light snow. Very similar to what we saw today, although more areas of southeast Michigan might be experiencing some of those snowflakes. So flakes around mainly for this evening, but they come to an end by midnight, mostly cloudy skies, temperatures down to around 14 here in town, low teens also in your neighborhood. On your Tuesday, as you plan it out, teens in the morning, sunrises at 739, 29 by noontime, upper 20s in the afternoon, so slightly below average, but mostly dry during the day. As we get into Wednesday and that new frontal system, there's a slight chance of a late snow shower or even a wintry mix with temperatures that will be just above freezing by a few degrees, 37 for a high. Early morning snow shower is possible on Thursday and a high of 32. Another chance of rain mixing with snow, again light, minor amounts once again, maybe a trace to an inch at the most if there's any snow on Friday, a high temperature of 37. Then get ready for Super Bowl Sunday and Super Bowl weekend. Good time to be indoors watching some championship football, right? Look at those temperatures, much lower. Temperatures in the 20s by day, teens and single digits by night and early morning. That's a look at your weather forecast. During the Winter Olympics, we have plenty of news for you during the day, and you can watch First at Four right here online or on your favorite streaming service. Plus, we'll be streaming a special edition of Local 4 News every night at 10 p.m. on ClickOnDetroit.com. That news update will also be streaming live on our Local 4 Plus app, which you can download to your smart TV, Roku, Fire Stick, or Apple TV. It's free, and just like downloading an app for your phone, you just do it right onto your TV. So make sure to join Kim and Devin tonight at 10. Plus, we'll have our regular newscast over on at Local 4 tonight at 5 and 6. There's Olympic coverage during primetime, followed by a late edition of Local 4 News at 11, which is going to air tonight about 1230 in the morning. You can always find news updates at ClickOnDetroit.com. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Have a great afternoon.